This is your quintessential arena, Sheffield. So this is LJ. He d what do you do? What is your job? I, um, that's a good question. <laughs> uh, so this, this will give you a clue, this little disc. LJ looks after our in ear mixes. He makes sure that the in ear monitors are like charged and batteries are good and yeah. good to go. The, the sound is, that doesn't matter. As long as the batteries are good. That's it, that's what we care about. <laughs> Seriously though, the best in ear mix I've ever had in my entire life. Uh, and the only one. <laughs> I <laughs> know. I've got like two or three other ones. Oh, well, yeah, yeah well, so I've got well, a really small selection that I can compare you with. But, oh, right, well, but you want okay. you are number one still. Am I still at the top of the You're three. absolutely at the top. Thanks, and he's got some South African lingo down. And it's lecker, like Just a don't, lecker. Don't say any swear no, words. I, say, I don't know any swear words. Which, in, oh, he knows Africa a few. Aunt. He knows a few. So sometimes he'll like whisper them in my <laughs> in-ears, which makes me laugh. Just to make him think at home. Yeah, he's a boss. Yo, so this person's actually play, played a really significant role in the show. And it's Mr. Jamie Norton. Jamie, what did you do? What was your role? Um, musical director. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Just slayed it. <laughs> did such a good job. And he actually yeah. left us for a while because because yeah. he thought we could cope on our on our own. But I thought I'd better come back and check. Just to be yeah. sure. Because you know you can't trust musicians. And how do you? What do you think? What do you think? How did it go? Great tonight. I thought it was really good. Awesome. I think you did me proud. Awesome. Yes. The Jamie Proud. Because oh, we felt the pressure a little bit, to be honest. If you know Jamie's in the audience, I know. You want to play right? I, I did feel like I have to be a bit sharper tonight. Yeah. Ja Jamie's I don't got. Think that was happening. Yeah, ears, ears, <laughs> ears of a hawk. So this this gentleman right here is Mr. Gav. He, what do you do? What is your responsibility on tour? On tour security. As you can see. <laughs> and logistics. And he's responsible for knowing where the best Guinness in the world is. That's an easy one. But he's a boss. He looks after us really well. So this man, Mr. Tristan Lillingston, aside from having the most English name that I've ever heard in my life, he is an absolute boss. He is tour manager. And that's pretty much what you do, right? Yeah. Tour manage. Make, I get. I make sure he wakes up in the morning or the afternoon, and I make sure he gets on stage on time. And you make sure that I get to the doctor when I got sick. Yeah. That I know when the bus called. Basically, he's a legit human being, and none of this would be possible without him. And uh, just watch out for him at the poker table. <laughs> Seriously, real talk. <laughs> Oh, sorry, am I bothering you? No. Ah. Hi. Oh, hi. So this is Michelle. She's amazing. What do you usually do, Michelle? What do I usually do? Yeah, what's your job? Aside from being awesome. Apart from being awesome, of course, I steam shoot. <laughs> I look after Quobus. Yeah, she does. She's the most important person that is. Wow. I didn't even tell her to say that. She takes care of all the clothes. She make us, makes us look really nice every night. And aside from that, she even like puts like little emergency packets in my room because I'm feeling sick. Yeah. Next level. She's so amazing. Demanding. demanding. A little, I'm not, actually, I'm not that demanding. No, you're not actually. Just a little bit. The bestest, bestest person ever to work for. Wow. She's great. We get along really well, Michelle and I. This is PJ. Aside from having the coolest accent, of probably anybody I've ever heard in my entire <laughs> life. He, he takes care of guitars. He's one of the, the guitar techs, so he takes care of Charlie's guitars. What else do you do? Charlie's guitars and Matt's bass. Okay. Charlie's guitars and Matt's bass. It's so cool. I love it. I love it. He's a boss. Dang. Dang. It's oh, the O2. Look at that this guy. That's right. Australian. <laughs> this is Mackie, which is the coolest name I think I've ever heard in England. <laughs> Is it a name or a nickname? My nickname. Okay, it's your real name. Jack. Okay, that's not as good as Mackie. I know, is that a swagger Mackie with Mackie? Mackie slays, bro. <laughs> what, do, what do you do on tour? Uh, I look after James. Okay. So another... another. Tune his banjos. Another... <laughs> Thankfully you don't have to tune the, the guitar. 
<laughs> Another guitar tech that just slays. These guys are really, really good at what they do. It's awesome to see. This gentleman right here, his name is Steve. Hi. <laughs> he's my, my first drum tech that I've ever had in my entire life. And he's a boss. Like every time when we arrive, this kit is set up perfectly. Check the kit. It slays it every single time. Such a boss. Seriously. I feel like I haven't done a video in a while. We are in Nottingham, right? Yes, uh, yeah, I think so. Not, not, think see, that's. <laughs> you? This is, see, this is the thing. Like, everything is kind of blurring together right now, so we've done a few shows the past few days, and I don't, honestly don't even quite know exactly where we are. Let me show you today's dressing room, because they're not all great and I, it's hilarious to me that I'm commenting on the quality of a dressing room seeing as that I only stepped into my own dressing room for the first time like a week ago so take it with a grain of salt but this is what it looks like every dressing room we got the schedule we got the Wi-Fi maybe blow that out even when you're editing this because people shouldn't be seeing that and the set list and then Nick set up my set up lots of water coffee practice kit that I warm up on and next guitar. Yeah! <laughs> I know I gotta pretend like I'm used to this. Like I'm really like, yeah, it's just another dressing room, but I'm stoked, man. It's cool. I'm happy. What up? So I quickly just wanna talk you guys through the kit that I used for the Bastard Bix Can Fly tour. It is a DW Collector Series kit. It's a beast of a kit. It was so much fun to play. It's pretty much exactly the same setup that I have back in LA. So I have 8, 10 and 12 rack toms. I have a 16 inch floor tom, a 22 kick, 14 by 6.5 main snare, which is a beast. Even if you tune it quite high, it still sounds so beefy in the front of house, which is awesome, which is exactly what I wanted. And then I just have a 14 by 5.5 side snare. And main snare is kind of um, is articulate and <laughs> I'm gonna say articulate quite a few more times in this video, but the main snare is quite bright, it's quite high, uh, especially for the kind of music that we're playing, and then the side snare is more uh, fat, and and uh, I'd say a little bit more dull. We use I use the big fat snare drum head on it, which um, is actually amazing, you guys should check that out, and it just makes it really beefy, shortens the note. It's a really nice, short little um, ballad snare sound, uh, which I use in actually quite a few of the songs as well. And then for cymbals, obviously Sabian, Sabian all the way around. I actually flew my own cymbals into um, England for these shows, so I'm using all of my own cymbals that I've used in all of the videos previously, which is actually quite cool, except for this china, because I cracked my previous china. I play really hard on these shows. And then also this, um, this crash on the right-hand side, which is usually 19-inch HHX Extreme crash and, and I also cracked that one because I play really hard and that one was quite thin so this one's a little bit um, thicker this is the explosion crash I'm um, also 19 inch so it's totally very similar to the previous one but it's a little bit thicker so it can take a little bit more beating and then in terms of the other symbols it's exactly the same 14 inch artisan hats oh they sound so good so so good they're my favorite pair of hats that I've ever used uh, got the saturation crash on the left hand side um, ISO ride as always 20 inch um, little 8 inch radio bell which I love so much 6 inch flash in front of me and then just these two pairs of stacks uh, if you guys want to see the specs of this uh, symbol setup it's on my website like I said it's the same symbol setup that I've used pretty much since I started making videos with Sabian symbols so uh, it's really nice to be able to use this on tour the kit sounds phenomenal um, it's such a fun kit to play the drum tech Steve does such an amazing job um, at setting it up and tuning it and changing the heads. He changes the snare head after every show and he changes the tom heads after I'd say every uh, second or third show. So it's been amazing to play on fresh, well-tuned heads. Uh, it sounded incredible. And then hardware obviously DW9000 double pedal, DW5000 hi-hat stand actually. Then I've got this cool like hardware system. I know this is not like Part of the drum hardware but that's quite interesting it's like a hard drive system that i use to trigger all the songs from so i have this pedal that i hit and um in between songs and the, obviously that's the set list and so i kind of look at the guys and if we're ready to go then i hit that pedal um it starts a song this is the main machine this is the backup and they both run at the same time so if the top one fails and the bottom one kind of takes over 
But that's been kind of interesting, being, being the one that triggers the songs and everything is synced to this machine, including the lights. So when I hit this, um, there's basically a time code that feeds the lights. Um, it basically feeds the whole show. So little pressure, but I've kind of gotten used to it now. It's actually a lot of fun. Then I also use these Roland pads. I have three Roland pads that I basically just use for the first song, which is Coming Home. I spoke to Jamie, the musical director, and we chose to really just do it um, organically with me actually playing the samples from the record, um, which is a lot of fun. So I open the show with these three pads. It's just a kick, a snare, and a, and a clap. And then I also use the snare in two other songs. But um, the Roland pads are actually also working really, really well. Otherwise, yeah, Promark sticks, got my signature sticks. Evans heads all around, G2 coateds on the tops, G1 clears on the bottoms, G1, I mean G2 coateds on the snare tops as well. Got an EMAD, um, let me make sure. EMAD 2 on the kick drum, uh, just a normal resin and head on the other side. And yeah, I think that's pretty much it. All in all, it's been, it's been phenomenal to play on like my exact setup that I have in my practice place that I've played on for so long. So it's been, it's been such a joy to be able to play on essentially exactly my kit that I have played on for so long and it's not like a it's not a smaller version it's not a bigger version it's pretty much exactly the kit that I use so it's been so much fun to play on this kit in, in, in such big venues and I've really really enjoyed it big ups to David Phillips from DW um, Scott Garrison the guys looked after me so well hooked up this kit for the tour everybody at Sabian everybody at Promark um, DW it's been it's been Evans Heads has been, it's been phenomenal to see how these companies just rally behind me and, and support me and i um, really thankful to be working with such amazing people. But yeah, that's the kit.